What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the POCO F5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM and I have been daily driving this and if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your POCO F5 you can check out the flashing guide from the description box below. And this is the 20th January 2024 build, of course based on Android 14 and here in the about section this is how it looks like, we got the Evolution X logo up top, then we have the Android version of course showing up as 14. And here, let me show you the Evolution X version shows as 8.2, that is Tikoi as the code name. The security patch here that you are getting is latest of January 5th, 2024. The stock kernel is 5.10 silver core kernel and the build maintainer is still Joe. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. And we have the build date as 20 January, 2024. In the system settings, this is how it looks like right now. And in here, you will get the system updater and you can check for updates. In the gesture settings, we get a new thing. You will get this double tap on fingerprint sensor. And if you just turn it on, you can set it to multiple different features like to take a screenshot or toggle flashlight, etc. And you can actually double tap on your fingerprint sensor. And as you can see right now, it takes a screenshot and it might be a useful feature for some. So that is really great. I'll just disable it for the time being. And we have the playback control, the prevent ringing, the quick torch options. Then we have the swipe click screenshot also is working perfectly fine. No need to worry. We get the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens and even the capture mode feature appears. Then we get the one handed mode and stuff. Then we have the lift to check phone as well. And there is a show ambient mode. It actually wakes up into the always on display kind of mode whenever you pick up the device. That is actually working. I have tested that. I have been using that. And we have the quick tap actions. And this is the back tap kind of thing. And if I double tap right now on the back side, as you can see, it turns on the flashlight. So yeah, right now I can double tap again to turn it off. So all these features are actually working perfectly fine. We also have the navigation mode right here. In the settings of it, we have the navigation hint, then the edge long swipe action. And these are the features that you will get for this. And we have the pill length and radius customization. I have customized these two to the maximum. And this is how long and thick it looks with the maximum settings. We have the back gesture height and we have the back gesture animation, haptic, and we have the IME button space. Then we have the swipe to invoke assistant that is actually working fine. We have the left edge, right edge customization. Two button and three button navigation is also there, of course. A huge thanks to you guys because we have crossed 30,000 subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, guys. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page and swiping on it, it's really, really smooth experience. Swiping up will get to the app drawer. Swiping down will get to the notification panel. In the light theme, still the notification panel stays dark. That's how it is. And the widgets are working perfectly fine. I have added a couple of widgets in this particular screen. You will see the battery widget is actually working. I can tap on each of them. It will open the phone's battery or Bluetooth battery and the clock widget and stuff. Everything like everywhere, the animations and stuff are really, really smooth over here. No issues so far. And by the way, you are getting the pixel launcher right out of the box. This is not the Evolution X launcher or something, but double tapping on the status bar will make the device sleep. And let me actually show you the pickup gesture. And as you can see, the pickup gesture is working fine. No need to worry. And the fingerprint scanner, of course, is working fine. By the way, these are the stock apps of this ROM. So the whole UI is pretty clean right out of the box. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Of course, we still have the Leica camera version 5. And with that, everything is pretty optimized. The photos, the portrait mode pictures, even the front camera selfies and all. Everything is really, really optimized. No issues whatsoever. And even in the video settings, you can shoot up to 4K and 60 FPS with this. So that is really nice. As you can see, 4K 60 FPS with the rear camera is working perfectly fine. So no issues. You can switch that to like 1080p 60 FPS as well from here. We have the documents and the enhanced mode. Then we have the pro mode. And also with the pro mode videos, you can go up to 4K 60 FPS. No issues. And you will also get multiple different features like this slow motion and short flame, etc. kind of options. And these are actually downloading right now. But yeah, so you get the idea. This is the default camera of this ROM. And Overall experience with this particular Leica camera version 5, it's really great. No problems that I have faced. Talking about the quick setting panel, I'm not going to show you everything, but let me actually show you the quick toggles that I have added. You can take a glimpse or pause it if you need it. And there is a power menu and I have actually enabled the advanced reboot. And right now I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here. Let me show you the basic certifications and here in the DRM info, it actually shows L1. So no issues with 1080p streaming with the Netflix or Amazon Prime. The IR Blaster actually works perfectly fine here. And with the play integrity check, it actually shows these two, the meets device integrity and basic integrity. And the Play Store also right now shows as device is certified. So that's nice to see. And also the banking apps are working totally fine. I have been using a lot of banking apps, no problems with those. Also in Google Photos, it does have the pixel kind of unlimited photos and videos backup. So that's a really nice feature to have. All the Android 14 features like the game space, the cloned apps, and even the flash notifications are present in this ROM. 
Now let's talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like and this is really interesting that we right now have the thermal profiles, the charging control, the battery charge warning, the sleep mode, the battery optimization power app. Also if we just scroll down a little bit more, you will get the battery health, the battery temperature and you will also see the battery cycle count. That's really nice that it shows all those info right here in the battery settings. We also have the schedule battery saver kind of mode that you can actually use and let me actually tell you I have been using the battery saver mode on this ROM for a couple of times. Here the performance doesn't drop at all even with battery saver. Just notice if I enable the battery saver mode as you can see yes the display turns out to be 60 hertz in the like battery saver mode. You can change that from the display settings I guess but I would say even with the battery saver turned on the performance over here it's much much better. I have used the last ROM that is project metrics from there I have seen with the battery saver the performance just goes sluggish and in that particular ROM I have also faced a video buffering kind of issue but those kind of issues are not simply there in this ROM so that is a really really great experience that we are having in this particular ROM that the overall performance even with battery saver or even without that the performance it's just much much better even when compared to ROMs like Project Matrix that I have to say. Now let's talk about the battery life. I have tested that with the Aku battery app and here my estimated screen on time here it shows about 9 hours and 42 minutes so that you can actually guess it is about 10 hours of screen on time. The screen off or standby it shows more than 3 days so that's again a huge amount of standby and the battery life has actually improved a lot even when compared to past builds of the Evolution X-ROM. Combine news shows as 20 hours so that's again a really nice number and in the health section for me the battery health shows as 87%. And yes, the fast charging and all, the 67 watt fast charging is actually working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. This is how the sound and vibration settings looks like. And if we just scroll down more, we have this brightness slider haptic, quick setting tile vibrate touch, and we have the volume haptic. Then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option and much more customization like the per app volume control, tile per tone, screen locking sound, etc. And this is how the volume panel actually looks like. And you can expand the volume panel just like this. We have the dial per tone, screen locking sound, charging sound. And we also get the Dirac settings and in here it shows the Mi Audio Dirac kind of logo. And we have the choose scene option. Then we have the headphone type option you can actually change. And we have the preset options. These are the settings that you will get. And we also have the enable hi-fi mode. Then we have the clear speaker option in the sound settings. And in the display settings, it's pretty normal. We have the extra dim. Then inside lock screen, we have face unlock kind of settings. I'll show you the face unlock stuff later. We have the dynamic clock, always show time and info. And we have the always on charging, lift to check phone. And in the advanced settings, you will get the pocket mode, hand wave, etc. And in the dark theme, of course, you get the pitch black option and all. And we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes. And we have the screen saver, the display size and text option. Then we have the DPI, the nightlight, the live display is there. And in here, you can calibrate the colors if you want to. The normal colors, I have been using it with the boosted option. Then we have the allow window level blurs, auto red screen. Smart pixel options are also there. And we have the minimum and maximum refresh rate. You can customize that. Low power refresh rate, that's the battery saver refresh rate. You can change it to 120 hertz if you need to. And we have the high touch polling date, the double tap to wake, wake up on plug, and the pocket detection, the full screen apps. And we have the per app refresh rate. You can change it up to 120 hertz. In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like and if you go into the more wallpapers, these are the wallpapers that you will get. Minerals and all, everything is working perfectly fine. These are the pixel kind of wallpapers that you can choose. Even the live wallpapers are there like the come alive and the living universe wallpapers. You can use them if you want to. We also get the AI kind of wallpapers. You can use them. And in terms of the lock screen, you can actually customize that inside this lock screen kind of tab. And as you can see, the Android 14 kind of clocks are there and you can use whichever clock you like. I have been using it with this one and the wallpaper that I have been using is from the Freshwalls app and if you just scroll down more we have the home screen shortcut customization, the more lock screen settings and inside home screen if you scroll down we have the themed icons then we have the app grid up to 5x5. Five five. Now let's talk about the security settings in here this is how it looks like if you go into the device unlock you will get the fingerprint and face unlock both and in the settings of it we have the quick unlock, the scramble pin layout, enable pin privacy, auto confirm lock etc kind of new features. And in the more settings right now, if you just scroll down, you will get the app lock. So app lock is actually working perfectly fine. I'll show you that. Before I show you the face unlock, let me actually show you with the fingerprint scanner. And here I'll just double tap on the status bar. And right now I do not have always on display turned on. And as I showed, pickup gesture is working perfectly fine. No issues with it. And if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try one more time. Just notice the unlocking speed. It's really, really fast. No problems whatsoever. And if I just turn on the always on display, let me actually show you. Yeah, this is how it looks. Double tap to wake also works perfectly fine. Just notice the animation. It looks beautiful. And if I do it with the power button, this is how it looks like. And tapping on the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. Does that ripple effect. Looks really nice. Let me try one more time. 
talking about the app lock here i'll just try to open this particular app and as you can see it shows this app lock kind of window and if i just tap the fingerprint scanner it just unlocks and goes wherever i left it now i'll show you the face unlock and let me just set it up quickly just completed the setup of the face unlock now here you will also get this when swiping up on lock screen so that it doesn't use the face unlock all the time let me show you how it works and if i go into the lock screen right now by just double tapping to wake as you can see right now even if i point the device towards my face it's not unlocking because it's not using the face unlock yet and if i just swipe up then only as you can see it shows reorganizing face and it unlocks so this is really nice that we are getting all these features back into the android 14 and the face unlock speed it's completely fast and smooth no issues so far and even you can use face unlock with the app lock right now if i do that as you can see right now it unlocks with the face unlock so app lock also works with the face unlock or fingerprint whichever you want to use talking about 5g speeds that is actually working perfectly fine here no need to worry about it also this rom has the stock dialer as the google dialer and with that the faulty calling video calling everything is working fine no need to worry about it and also it has the bcr so the call recording right now is actually working you have to just toggle this call recording on and once you do that the call recording will be working perfectly fine here now let's talk about performance well in test of your website it actually shows 120 hertz all the time so no issues with the high refresh rate and overall even if i open multiple different apps let me actually show you with x and play store and even youtube now let's open Instagram maybe now if I open all the apps from memory just notice how smoothly it opens okay so Facebook I did not open earlier but right now if I just open them so yeah switching between apps it's not a problem at all it's just a buttery smooth experience no problems whatsoever and by the way the recent panel this is how it looks like we have the screenshot the lens option and you can definitely go to the split screen mode the free form mode so overall in terms of performance i would say this is a really really nice experience overall and the overall ui smoothness it's just a much better experience right now and here are the android 10 gigbench code with a cpu stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall ui performance and yes if you want to game if you are a gamer you can definitely do that the gaming performance will be much much better when compared to other roms as well i feel because the overall ui performance is much better here talking about customizations it still has huge amount of customizations not gonna show you everything because it's too much and here the ios 16 style battery icon and all everything is there and you can use them in the notifications you still get the island notifications those are working with the heads up we have the quick setting panel kind of customization and you can customize it thoroughly we have the power menu kind of customization you can enable multiple different things with it and the gestures we still have the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar double tap to sleep etc in the lock screen we still have the ambient music ticker edge lighting etc and the lock screen clock style these are the android 13 kind of lock screen clock style if you want to use them you have to go into the wallpapers and styles and set the default android 14 lock screen clock then you can use all of these lock screen clocks styles if you want to use them we have the height status bar option ripple effect etc and in the buttons we have these kind of settings we have the volume panel timeout and all in the miscellaneous settings there are multiple different things like this enable rom side play integrity fix we have the enable pixel props and the spoof device as pixel 8 pro then we have the spoof as pixel 8 pro for all google apps and we have the unlimited google photo storage unlock high fps in games and the netflix spoof these are the features you do not get in most roms forget about getting these features in your stock rom and we have the jitter then the ignore window secure flags allow application downgrade then we have the show cpu info sensor block for package also the usb configuration is there and you can set it to file transfer for convenience one more thing that i forgot to show you guys is that you can go into the security settings then in the more settings if you just scroll down a little bit more you get this high developer status so you can use particular apps without giving them developer permission so i have actually done that for this geopause slide app and that is actually working fine right now earlier it was not opening because i have the developer options turned on right now i can use that without any issues so with all those customizations with all the stability i would say the evolution x rom has improved quite a lot yes earlier it had some bugs but right now i would say it is one of the best experiences that i would have ever imagined for the poco f5 on top of android 14. let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet in the meantime do share this video out with your friends so that they get to know how the poco f5 is running this android 14 drum like a hot knife on butter this is tito from kdn tech signing off and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now